Tofu is one of those things that you either love or you hate, and I get it. It looks weird, it has a bad reputation, you don't know if it's actually good for you to eat, it looks like a sponge, it tastes and has no flavor, but I'm gonna submit to you that it's all in the way that you prepare it. Before we get started, let me know in the comments if you like tofu or not. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to make really perfect, crispy tofu in the oven or the air fryer without any oil at all. I know it seems like it's impossible, but it's totally possible. And I'm also gonna share with you my new obsession recipe for this incredible red Thai curry noodles with udon noodles. The crispy tofu can be used in the red Thai curry noodles and it is just Mm, delicious. Tofu is made from fresh or dried soybeans and the soybeans are soaked and then they're boiled and they're strained to make a liquid. Then either calcium or magnesium is usually added to curdle or set the liquid, kind of how cottage cheese is curdled from cow's milk. And then the curds are pressed into the white blocks that you see in the grocery store. The firmness of the tofu depends on how much liquid has been pressed out of the curds. In today's recipes, I'll be using extra firm tofu because it has the least amount of moisture, but I'm also gonna share with you some tips on how to get the moisture that's in there out all the way because that is a big key to keeping it extra crispy. Tofu has very little flavor, which is probably why if you're not a tofu person, you didn't like it in the past. But the good thing is that it absorbs whatever flavor you put on it. Organic tofu is a great source of plant-based protein. It has about 10 grams of protein for every half a cup that you eat. It's low in saturated fat, it's cholesterol free. The most widely held fear about soy is that the isolates and the phytoestrogens in the soy could cause breast cancer. However, the science has shown the exact opposite. The phytoestrogens in soy appear to improve breast cancer survival rates and reduce the risk of developing it. Now these studies were done on soy foods and not powders or supplements or things that are in like fake vegan meats. Soy consumption may reduce the risk of prostate cancer, and it's also really helpful for hot flashes during menopause. Now, maybe you didn't know this, but tofu is not actually a whole food. It is a minimally processed soy food. So if you think about the whole foods, you're thinking about the actual edamame, the real soy beans. So because it's minimally processed, that means that some of the original fiber has been stripped out of it, but it still does have a place on a healthy whole food plant-based diet. It's not something that I eat all the time, but I like to throw it in there for variety. And so let's get into how to make really crispy tofu without oil, which is just amazing. And also this fantastic red curry noodle. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna love this. If you're using an oven, go ahead and preheat it to 425 Fahrenheit and then line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Now, of course you wanna drain uh, the tofu and there are many ways to press out excess water with the tofu, but I am pretty uh, simple when it comes to this. And I'm gonna show you a way that anyone can do it, no special equipment required. So I'm just using probably like two or three lint-free clean dish towels and I'm just pressing with my hand. Wrap the tofu in your towel, press it, get out excess water liquid, put it on another dry spot, wrap it again, press it. And once you feel like you've gotten a lot of the excess out, then cut the block of drained and pressed tofu in half lengthwise. From there, you are going to blot it again with another clean, dry towel, getting as much excess liquid out as possible. Then you're gonna cut each of those rectangles into four long slices. And then from there, you can go ahead and blot it again, then cut across each rectangle four more times. So roughly, I'm making about 32 bite-sized cubes. Of course, that's gonna vary a little bit depending on the size of your tofu block. Press out those two rectangles again with a clean, dry, lint-free dish towel and remove any excess moisture. Grab a large mixing bowl and you are going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari or coconut aminos, half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Whisk this together just so there's no lumps or anything like that. And then gently add the cubes and toss these with like a silicone spatula or something gentle just until they're coated. It's gonna seem like it's not enough liquid, but it will just coat perfectly so that they're not soggy or swimming in sauce. Now in a large plate, just add about two tablespoons of arrowroot powder or cornstarch, either one will work. You can always add more arrowroot powder or cornstarch as you need to coat all of the tofu cubes lightly and then transfer all the cubes to a baking sheet as you go. Conversely, if you're using the air fryer, then you would just transfer them to the air fryer tray as you go. <laughs> Thank you.
Now you're gonna bake this in the oven for a total of 40 minutes, but after 20 minutes, you're gonna flip it halfway through. If you're using the air fryer, you're gonna do exactly the same thing, the arrowroot cornstarch dance, and then you're gonna place everything in the air fryer tray. You're gonna air fry it at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, flipping the cubes halfway through until the tofu is crispy and golden brown on the outside. And here you can see how nice and crispy these turned out. No oil needed. I'm going to break into this. They're soft and chewy on the inside, but not slimy and gross. And they're really nice and crunchy. Now this is a really basic crispy tofu recipe, but feel free to add any other seasonings that suit your taste in addition to what I've shared here. So this could be different spices or nutritional yeast or hot sauce or even liquid smoke. So now I'm gonna set these aside and I'll show you how to make these red Thai curry noodles. Okay, here's all the ingredients that I'm going to be using for these red Thai curry noodles. I took a trip to the Asian store and I was very inspired to make this recipe. And mince four cloves of garlic, thinly slice your shallots. I've got these amazing shallots that I got there, but if you have the more oblong shallot that you typically see in your regular grocery store, those will work fine. And if you don't have a shallot, you could even just use half of a yellow onion. And then either using a medium red bell pepper or three mini bell peppers. You're just gonna dice those up. I'm grating two medium carrots and I really like grated carrot in a dish where I am cooking vegetables because they're almost imperceptible but they give a nice texture. So adding about a quarter cup of water into a large wok, you're gonna add your shallots, the bell pepper, and the carrots. Now, while that is cooking for about five minutes, I am going to grate about two inches of ginger, which comes out to be a teaspoon of grated fresh ginger. I'm gonna thinly slice two shiitake mushrooms and then after this, I'm going to put the garlic, the ginger, and the mushrooms right into the same wok. And I'm gonna cook it for probably like another minute, stirring occasionally. Turn down the heat to medium low and add one 13 ounce can of unsweetened coconut milk. This can be light or it can be full fat. Add in two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari or coconut aminos, three tablespoons of red Thai curry paste, and two teaspoons of maple syrup or coconut sugar. Then you're just gonna mix this around and go ahead and add in about a half a cup of vegetable broth. This will just help once you get the noodles in to just make sure it's you know saucy enough. From here, I'm adding 16 ounces of fresh udon noodles, and I think these taste fantastic in this meal, but if you have another noodle that is fresh that you prefer, then go for that. Gently stir the noodles in the sauce so they combine well, and then cook for about five or seven more minutes until your desired consistency is achieved. Add in half a cup of frozen peas and let it cook for about another minute. Meanwhile, you can get your garnish ready. I am using fresh basil, fresh cilantro, lime juice. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the heat and you're gonna add in the full batch of the crispy tofu that you just made. Add the juice of half of a lime and then give it a taste. See if you wanna add a pinch of salt and then stir this all to combine. This recipe has quickly become one of my favorite recipes of all time. It is so flavorful and decadent. It feels like you are going out to a restaurant, but you're making this wonderful food in the comfort of your own home. So let me know if you try this out and if you enjoy it as much as I do. I hope you do, it's so, so good. Okay, come here so you can try this out and tell me what you think. <laughs> I don't wanna spill on your shirt. Mm. It's good, right? It's really good. That is delicious. <laughs> Try tofu and tell everybody if it's if it retained its crispiness. Yes, it did. Very nice. You do have hands. You could <laughs> <laughs> do this on your own. <laughs> mm. no. All right, you're going to enjoy it. For those of you interested in eating more healthy, whole food plant-based recipes, head over to my website and download your free copy of my ebook, Plant-Based Life, which has 15 recipes that you're gonna love and it's gonna give you a little bit of a guide to get started on eating this way. And if you want even more delicious, healthy recipes, check out these videos right over here where you can just keep eating and eating some really, really good vegan food. All right, I'll see you guys soon, bye.